What's up everyone, my name is Joe and welcome to Film Focused. This week I'm going to be giving you guys five reasons why you should be shooting film. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. Reason number one, film makes you slow down and think while you're shooting. One of the biggest advantages of shooting with a DSLR is being able to shoot at high frames per second and using memory cards that can store thousands of images at a time. This is also one of the biggest crutches of using a digital camera. This allows both novice and experienced shooters to rely on shooting at the highest frames per second that a camera can use in order to get the shot, meaning they can rattle off hundreds of images per minute and just hope that they get something good. And eventually this will end up getting a few good shots, especially if you're shooting at a very shallow aperture. But it's really the photographic equivalent of button mashing when you're playing Street Fighter 2. Yeah, eventually you're going to hit your opponent and get some good combos, but you're not really going to understand how it happened. So does this make you a better photographer, or does it hinder you? I think it's the latter. When shooting film, you only have a certain number of images per roll. That usually ranges between 10 and 36 images, depending on what format you're shooting. This means you're not really going to waste any frames on an image that you don't think has potential to be a really good shot. It's also going to make you stop and think about everything that goes into creating the shot your composition, your vantage point, your shutter speed, your aperture, all the above. This also leads to better comprehension of how an image comes to be, making you a better photographer in the long run. This also makes you plan ahead whenever you're shooting. You have to think about the light conditions, you have to think about what it is you're shooting, am I shooting portraits, am I shooting street, am I shooting landscapes, and then you have to choose your film stock. Am I using color, am I using black and white, am I shooting 100 ISO or 400 ISO? Am I going to overexpose a more versatile film like Portra 400? Or am I going to use something really specific like Velvia or Ektar 100? Planning ahead also gets you into a creative mindset before you start shooting. Meaning you're already in the creative process before you even pick up the camera to take a shot. It ultimately extends the amount of time that you're thinking creatively, making you more observant of your surroundings or of your subject leading to stronger and more creative images altogether. Reason number two, there is an extended period of time between when you shoot and when you edit. Some people might see this as a downside of shooting film, but it's one of my favorite parts. In this day and age, right after we shoot it, we can upload it to our phone via Wi-Fi or just stick our memory card into our MacBook and edit everything right away and post it to Facebook and Instagram and everything else in a matter of minutes. But with film, it could be a matter of hours, days, or weeks before you even see your negatives. Separating the shooting process from the editing process really helps you become a better photographer. Sometimes you can get too overly obsessed over what the scene actually looked like when you were shooting, and if the image doesn't really turn out the same way, it can kind of throw you off. This forces you to see the image before you take it, but it also allows you to be more flexible in the editing process leading you to be more creative on both ends of the spectrum. Reason number three, there's more variety of formats and camera styles at an affordable price. This is one of the benefits that really stands out to me. There are seven common formats when shooting film and three common camera types. There's 35 millimeter, which is the same as shooting a full frame DSLR. And then in medium format, you have 6x6, six 6x45, six 6x7, six and 6x9. And then there's large format, which shoot in 4x5 and 8x10 inch sheets of film. And with each of these formats, you have different stocks of film, ranging from black and white to color negative to positive transparency or slide film. These all have their own unique characteristics and qualities that interest different types of photographers. The three common camera types that you run into are SLR, rangefinder, and view cameras. Because most of the film cameras you're going to find online are used, you'll be able to get them at a bargain price compared to their digital counterpart. Now, rangefinders and SLRs are pretty common and typical through 35mm and most medium format cameras, but they still have a few unique characteristics when shooting film. 
A great example would be this Pentax 672. It's pretty much a 35mm SLR on steroids. It's just much bigger, but the camera functions exactly the same. Now, my Pentacon 6 is also an SLR camera, but instead of the typical prism finder, it has a waist level viewfinder. Meaning you open the top of the camera and look down into the lens to take your shot, giving you a unique perspective on a familiar type of camera. Shooting different camera styles and formats of film ultimately changes the way you interact with your subject and take a photograph. It changes the photographer to subject relationship, and it also changes the amount of time necessary to take a photograph. A great example is shooting large format. Using a view camera, you actually look through the back of the camera itself. You do all your composition and your focusing before putting the film into the camera. Once the film is in the back, you can no longer see through to the lens, meaning you can't adjust your focus or your composition without risk of completely ruining the image. This leads to taking about 10 to 15 minutes to take a single shot on large format. But with a rangefinder, you could go through a whole roll of film in that amount of time. Lastly and ultimately, you can shoot all of these different formats of film and styles of camera for a budget price compared to most DSLRs. This makes shooting film and learning on film much more versatile than buying a digital camera. You can spend a couple hundred dollars on a few different film cameras that shoot multiple formats instead of spending thousands of dollars on a camera that can only shoot on a 35mm full frame sensor. Reason number four. Shooting film is a more rewarding process than shooting digital. In general, you're putting much more time and effort into creating an image on film than you would be digitally. Regardless if you're developing your film at home or sending it to a lab, that extra time in between taking an image and seeing it on a negative really builds up the anticipation of how the image is turned out. Especially if you develop your film at home, you have a hand in the process of making that image come to life right in front of your eyes. And when it finally does, it gives you such a rewarding feeling that shooting digitally can never really do for you. Last but not least, film helps you embrace the grain and learn to love the imperfections that come with shooting film. Nowadays, there are digital cameras that can shoot all the way up to like 12,000 and 64,000 ISO. Especially with things like Instagram and Facebook these days, we're obsessed with the illusion of perfection. This is especially true in photography. But when shooting film, some of your favorite images turn out to be the images that have imperfections or mistakes in them. A great example would be this image that I took with my Pentacon 6 a few years ago. The camera tends to have bad overlapping issues if you allow the film advance lever to slap back to the camera, and it happened on this roll. But I absolutely love how this image turned out because of that mistake. Another great example is shooting with disposable cameras or point-and-shoot 35mm cameras. You can come up with some really wacky and weird photos that sometimes you forget you even took, and those end up becoming your favorite images on the roll. Ultimately, shooting film helps you fall in love with the process of creating photographs. It helps you understand what it takes to create a photograph that will move not just you, but an audience. If you're too caught up with worrying about an image looking absolutely perfect or creating an illusion of perfection, you're missing the point of what it means to be a photographer in the first place. Learn to take a step back and take your time and really think about what it is that you're doing. This will ultimately make you a better photographer, but it will also make the process of making photographs much more rewarding. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. If you have any comments or questions, please be sure to leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video or are interested in seeing more content like this, please give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Thank you guys for stopping by. I really appreciate your time. Hope you have a good day and I'll see you next time.